And a happy Monday morning from Studio AP. Damon Hack alongside the big timer, Charlie Reimer, the rest of the crew in just a little bit. How are you, Slim? What's going on? I'm doing good, Damon. Uh, you know, I'm working hard on that golf game turn 50 in December. Yes. Got those starts on the PGA Tour Champion starting in February next year. I'm motivated. Had some good practice sessions. Yeah. I'm making some progress. Good to hear. Text with Travis Fulton yesterday, starting to dial it in a little mm. bit. So... Having some fun. Look Hope out, you had Bernard a good Langer. Too. I did have a great week. I watched a lot of golf. Sunday, a great duel in New York, but also a great duel Saturday night in Las Vegas. You might have watched it. Mayweather beat McGregor. Kyle Thompson watches it. Listen, Tiger Woods made 110 mil in 328 events. Floyd Mayweather just made 300 million in one. <laughs> Big time, are your thoughts? <laughs> well, Tiger didn't take any punches to make that. <laughs> I'd be happy with either one of them. I can tell you that. Are we but, get in the uh, wrong business? Well, maybe we're in the wrong business. <laughs> but uh, no, that's uh, you know, you go in the ring and do what he does. You yeah. deserve whatever they pay you. No yeah. doubt about that. Forty years young, quite an artistic mm. performance. The technician Floyd Mayweather. Another technician, Gary Williams. Good morning, pal. How are you? <laughs> Good morning, guys. Uh, Tiger didn't take punches. He threw punches. Mm. Yes. You watch the fight. From your home, I watched it from my home. It was it was better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Would you agree with that? I did. I would. Floyd didn't really receive too many punches either. He no, kind he of toyed not. with them a little bit to me. Um, you just you could tell just being a boxer how he outboxed him for sure. I know sometimes uh, we make these comparisons between golf and, and boxing and other sports, but we did have a mano a mano yesterday, and that is mm -hmm. what is happening now. Dustin Johnson wins for the fourth time at this year. He said afterwards, I feel as good as I did before Augusta when he had that mishap, and he beats Jordan Spieth. We had one point in the round yesterday, had a five-shot lead, the one-hole playoff. Let's take a look at the highlights, Chris. And, you know, Jordan Spieth is known for certain things, and one thing he does as well as anybody, his pace of his putts, and this has got a lot of bend to it. Yeah, absolutely. This is, and, yeah, he I mean, thinks with, Ford's going to win the golf tournament. Absolutely. With, you know, with Dustin being in trouble and laying up and having a you know 20-footer, he's just trying to get it down there close. Hopefully, he just have that little putt to win the tournament. Definitely more than 10, maybe 12 feet of break from right to left. So let's flash back to 2015, trying to force a playoff from a much shorter distance in the U.S. Open. Yeah, and you, know, you can see he pulled out a little bit. And that's the one difference I see in Dustin Johnson now compared to theirs, how much better his putting is from that distance. Well, let's go back to yesterday. He knows he has to make it. You assume Jordan Spieth is going to make a two and a half footer. So this is to force a playoff downhill. It's hard to do, keep that speed perfect like Oof. that and just catch it any harder than that. It doesn't, it doesn't break and it lips out and he doesn't make that putt. That was an unbelievable putt with the, all the pressure and everything on it. No question about it. That's about as much emotion as you will see from 100%. Dustin Johnson. Yep. Under any circumstance. So we go back to 18. This is absurd. <laughs> this is a line that um, not too many people can take. You can see he's not too worried about it. Just picks his tee up. What an unbelievable drive. Carries that water by about 30. Gets up there almost to the end of the fairway. Right where he was in tune regulation. Wow. That was atomic. And he has had some others in the past. Luke Donald just seen Dustin's drop in 18 in the playoff. Funnily enough, that was the same line I tried a couple times. Didn't quite pan out. Hashtag wet. Yeah, he takes lines that very few can take. So now with the club that he has got dialed in over the last year and a half. And obviously, and he had that shot earlier um, in regulation, hit a little bit long. So he was able to kind of feed off that. And it's just a beautiful shot just to a couple feet underneath the hole. Yeah, so he's got this for the win. Similar distance to the putt at Chambers Bay to force the playoff. And you can see how he released that putter there, and actually he, he followed through and accelerating through. That was a, that wasn't an easy putt. That putt had some break on it. That ball was uh, almost outside right edge. No, no question about it. You could see that it was kind of bending a little bit. It was an it was an edge putt, Absolutely. and it was to win. And it was to beat a guy who had a five shot lead. So the the gravity of him coming back, saying he's 100 percent now, having these four wins, how impressive was that to do it against the guy he was trying to do it against who's become the best closer in the game without a doubt and one thing that you saw is that you saw no panic and, and no rush in dustin johnson he was five back after five holes to start the round and he just kind of knew he was playing great golf he knew he was hitting good putts i watched a lot of it early he was hitting some great putts that just didn't go in that he thought he made 
Um, he stayed really patient, and that's the thing that we see in Dustin Johnson. He never gets ahead of himself, and he just stays patient and was able to just kind of let Jordan come back to him a little bit. He made a couple birdies and got it close, and once he, he had a sniff for the lead, he, you knew he was up there to stay. Yeah, he was not going to go away, but stuff like this, you know, we're, we're accustomed to Dustin Johnson wowing you with drives. The tee shot on 15 at Chambers Bay kind of gets lost in the wash because he three-putted. The tee shot on 12 at Oakmont in the U.S. Open after being notified he might be penalized. It, it, you know, his season, despite the injury and having to take weeks off, and by the way, not having a top 10 in a major for the season, nonetheless, he moves to number one in the FedEx Cup. You, you take into consideration World Golf Championships, of which he has two, and now a playoff event. This guy is putting together a, a stone cold lock Hall of Fame career. Unbelievable, 16 wins, only 18 by Tiger since in the, in the last 15 years or 10 years. It, un, un, crazy what he's doing. No bogeys on the back nine the whole week last mm -hmm. week. Um, his putting and his wedge game is what's making him so good. It's He's so much better from inside six feet. Those putts that he might miss one or two of, he's making all of those now, and it's the big difference. Much more complete golfer. Way much more complete. And when he gets that wedge game dialed in like he's got it, that's a scary proposition. What we saw him do on that 18th tee ball in, in, in the playoff. <laughs> Scary. Yeah, and those four wins equal the total of Justin Thomas, who was the front runner of Player of the Year. I think there may be a little disagreement as to whether he has thrust himself firmly into this conversation. That's coming up a little bit later on. But more analysis of what transpired down the stretch. Back to Damon and Charlie. All right, G-Dub, they say styles make fights in the sweet science. That was so <laughs> cool about DJ in speech. They go about it in a different way. One with power, one with putter. Big time. Let's dig a little deeper on what we saw yesterday on that great 18th hole. Yeah, I a couple of future Hall of Fame members doing what they were born to do. And I want to point out a couple things as we look at that situation as it unfolded yesterday. First and foremost, imagine the most nerve-wracking situation you've ever been in on the golf course. You've got tons of adrenaline coursing through your veins. And, and to play a touch shot like that with 15 feet of break, mm. absolutely crazy. Now, DJ knows he's got to make this. He looked very comfortable. This wasn't a putt where he was worried about speed because if he three or four putts, it doesn't make any difference. He did a great job of getting that started on the right line. Right. And, and this is what uh, re really you know, ended up uh, sealing the deal for DJ. And let, let's go ahead and talk about this a little bit. Uh, the, the huge drive, we're going to get into that in a second, but uh, this is what has gotten so good with DJ. And go ahead and run this, guys. Uh, you know, it's a 94-yard shot up the hill. Um, you know, he can see the top of the flag, but he does such an amazing job of, of knowing how far the golf ball goes. And he's made it very simple. We talked to him about about it at his junior tournament in Myrtle Beach. Right. Chantel and I did. You know, he, he doesn't overthink it. He's got his wedges. He makes half, three quarters full. He mm. knows how far each one of them goes. He doesn't worry about the adrenaline coursing through his uh, veins. Um, it, it, both of these guys love the situation. They love being there, and they performed at a very, very high level. That's where the, why they are where they are in the world of golf. We had a 94-yard approach for a reason. The drive. You want to talk about a haymaker, Charlie. This set up everything. And, and I want you to notice folks at home this is every drive that was hit by every player the entire week that one out front <laughs> that was Dustin Johnson's tee shot right there on 18 are you kidding me Tony Fee now and uh, Justin Thomas in beside and, and uh, or the next closest ones back into the right but look but look at this difference 341 leaves him the 94 Jordan Speed hit a 315 a 315. That used to be long. Right, it used to be long, and he's got 182. So, you know, the fact of the matter is, is, is trying to compete uh, with somebody who's got 94 yards when you're 182. That's certainly an uphill battle. How do you do it? How, how does a person at home, you know, who's playing against somebody who absolutely, you know, Walmarts them every time, how do you compete? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. Yeah. And I'm going to tell our viewers you need to stick around because later in the show, we got a guy on the crew and Chris DeMarco that's fought that battle. Mm. And I can't wait to get his thoughts on that. Uh, we've seen him go with yeah. Tiger in a few situations. And Chris has got some pretty neat stuff to tell us about that. Lots of different ways to get it done. Let's send it back to Gary. All right, Damon, what else is happening now? It's all about the Benjamins, the 100, because the 100 are moving on to the Dell Technologies Championship in Norton Mass at TPC Boston. So we had three move in, three move out, which is not an outrageous amount of volatility, but you see David Lingmurth who uh, was at 103, so just a decent week was gonna get him inside there. He had a good week. Harold Varner III, very impressive. 
His job was on the line with respect to the Wyndham Championship. Got to 123 now to 91. And Bubba Watson, the biggest mover of all in terms of numbers. And then you see the three moved out. As far as Bubba Watson, Chris, you know, we've we've talked about his season because he's one of the biggest stars mm -hmm. in the game all year. And it's just been he just hasn't been able to get anything going, but he's showing some grit, some resiliency to get, and we don't necessarily associate that with him. He's consistent, he's powerful, he's dynamic, but he's showing serious grit. He is. What I liked was what he said earlier this, this, this year. He knows he had a bad year. Earlier this week he said, you know what? Once this is this is over, whatever my, wherever it ends for me, I'm done, and I'm going to take about three or four months off. So you know what? That was kind of made him comfortable. It almost kind of looked took, took the pressure off him. He really went out there and just said, you know what? I'm just going to free will it this week. If not, I'm home with my family. I don't have anything to do. So he went out and just kind of free willed it. Hit some great shots. I mean, what a great finish. Moved to 72nd. Well, he just has to make the cut next week, and he'll probably jump into the top 70. And you never know what can happen. I mean, it, oh, he's a win away from being in, in, in all the way through them all. No, and we didn't know whether he was going to make it past this week, let alone maybe get it all the way. His form is improving, and that is great momentum. Mm -hmm. All right, for now, let's go back to Damon for news on another star in the game. Absolutely, GW. Michelle Week. Gosh, she's just had an injury-riddled career, and we can add one more. She was scheduled to have surgery yesterday to have her appendix removed. She was actually tied for 23rd through three rounds of the Canadian Women's Pacific Open, and she had to withdraw. Of course, a couple of weeks ago, she was 1-2-0 and in that Solheim Cup. We wish her a speedy recovery, and Ron Syrak will have more on her in just a little bit. Also happening now, Sung Hyung Park from Korea, a final round 64 to win the Canadian Pacific Women's Open by two over Miriam Lee, her second win this season to go along with that U.S. Women's Open title. Charlie, she's 23 years of age, and I tell you what, another great player from South Korea and this Ooh. one can absolutely move it. So much talent in this young player and she was absolutely dominant on the Korean yes. LPGA. And if you start looking into her stats a little bit uh, th this is not a game that's you know built on smoke and mirrors. Her <laughs> fundamentals are really really strong. She drives a ball very long. She's seventh in distance on LPGA. When when she gets on the greens or yeah. uh, putts on greens and regulation, seventh on tour. She's got the second lowest scoring average on the LPGA this season and she's made the seventh, uh, excuse me, the second most number of birdies so far this season. She can absolutely go. She's off to a phenomenal start. The rookie year is over with. Uh, I'm very interested to see what she's going to do over these next five, eight, ten years of her career. I mean, 12 top tens in your rookie season, a major championship, mm -hmm. now another national championship. How does a rookie find comfort so quickly? You know what, Damon? Sometimes you're just born to do what yeah. you do. Yeah. You know, and it's a combination with a player like this of, of born with a lot of talent, right. a lot of great instruction, yeah. and then finally the, the the part of that formula that that um, she's nailing is very very hard yeah. work. Long so off the tee as well. Hard work pays off. Yeah, and 10 wins on the Korean LPGA mm. Tour, so she's had a lot of experience uh, hoisting trophies in her young career as we send it back over to G-Dub. Okay, Damon, time for the tee sheet as we start this week on a Monday. You know, college football is right around the corner and they focus on the top 25. Well, they do the same on the web.com. The 25 in history was made yesterday. We'll tell you and explain exactly what happened there. And also we know on Monday, tonight you get the fix with Michael Breed. He's gonna stop by. DJ is dialed in his wedges. Can you do the same thing? He'll explain. And finally, we haven't seen Tiger Woods play competitive golf in some time, but why would we know something today? Something pretty interesting happened on this day with respect to him when maybe the legend was born. Just getting started on this Monday. Great to have you with us here on Morning Drive. And did you follow the golf over the weekend? We know the most valuable thing you can get in the game is a, a game ball from us here on Morning Drive. Who do you think deserves one? At GC Morning Drive, send in all your nominees. You know, I could maybe give one to Chris DeMarco. Maybe every putty looked at Saturday at the WP9, Damon. What about me? I'm working on my short game. <laughs> okay. That's all you got for me? That was pitiful. Deflatable. Yeah, that was not good. You could be better than that.